action to bring back home the kings and queens of Africa. Hello and welcome to another edition of Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah and you're watching Diaspora Network Television. Today we're going to focus on education in Ghana, but an aspect of education that many do not think about. And I have just the right person here to take us through it. As you know, this government has focused exclusively, I mean, there's been a sharp laser focus on education. Uh, some of us don't understand, but we, we'll find out. And we got, like I said, we got the right person here. But before we get to him, before you get to meet my guests, guess what we do here? The jangle, Jermaine Sangle. Stay Good. So in today's jungle, I want you to watch this short clip that we put together here at Diaspora Network Television. Okay, so in today's jungle, um, when you take a look at the, the video that you just saw, I wonder if it made you think, okay? Many times, they call something unconscious bias. And that unconscious bias, sometimes we think about it, we think it's on other, from other people to us. But in many cases, it's from us ourselves to ourselves. I'll give you an example. If you walked into a room right now, a uh, black man in suit, just like my guest, and another white man in suit, just like, and you, you saw them both, what do you think? I mean, who do you ascribe a level of importance to? I, I can tell you, I've walked into a, a, a restaurant where uh, a security personnel or the gate man or the, the guy at the door he greeted me all right, but he stood there and I opened my door and I entered. Right behind me, like three steps behind me, there was a white couple. No older than I am, but just because they're white. This guy greeted them and proceeded to open the door for them, right? I mean, some will say it's not a big deal, but you know what? It is about time that we black people started to appreciate black. We have to put in the effort. We have to put in the effort to like ourselves if we're going to want other people to like us. Why is it that even amongst ourselves, we ascribe a higher level of importance to someone who has a lighter skin than a darker skin? Why is that? Where's the correlation between a person's color of, uh, the, the color of a person's skin and uh, a, a level of intellect? There's absolutely no correlation but we've been brainwashed over a long period of time, so now we do it to ourselves. You hear guys talking, oh, I'm me, I've seen this nice girl. Beautiful, co 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 We say it without thinking, <laughs> you know? But if we're going to get other people to, to really appreciate us, I think it starts with us. And that is why there's a focus on loving black, respecting your race. So today's jungle, I'll keep it simple. You, the viewer, make a conscious effort to respect and love black before anybody else would do so. That's today's jungle. We'll be back to meet my guest. Stay tuned. 
as the national regulator of the communications industry in Ghana, the National Communications Authority seeks to ensure an environment that is safe and fair for consumers and service providers. NCA grants licenses and authorizations for operation of communication systems and services, develops guidelines to streamline communication activities, establish and monitor quality of service indicators for operators and service providers. NCA is in eight regions, Nakra, Tamale, Takradi, Kumasi, Ho, Koforidua, Sunyani, and Bolgatanga. Do you have unresolved complaints with the service providers? Contact us on 0800-110662-0307-011419 between the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. from Monday to Friday or visit our website at www.nca.org.gh and follow the procedure for filing a complaint or submitting inquiry. National Communications Authority, Communications for Development. Hello and welcome. Today I want you to meet a regular, I won't say regular, this is the third interview. Nana Ejeyabua, mm -hmm. Managing Director, CEO. CEO of Student Loan Trust Fund. Nana, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Nana Ejeyabua, you've been here, but mostly we talk about other things. Today the focus is on education, student loan. In a place where addresses are a challenge, Ghana Card, they just now bring in it. When you do student loan, is it reasonable to expect to be able to get your money back? Yeah, thank you, Jermaine, um, <laughs> for another opportunity to be together to discuss a very important you know, topic. Mm -hmm. um, Student loan. Initially, I mean, uh, uh, it's been through, let me give you a brief history. I mean, mm -hmm. when after independence, mm -hmm. tertiary education was free. Okay. Yeah, up well, to. After independence, tertiary yeah, education. Tertiary education in Ghana was free. Okay. Up to mid 70s. Okay. Okay. Then. Um, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember. I yeah. grew up on KNUST campus. They used to feed them three square yeah. meals a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I was free then. Um, then getting to the early 80s, uh, book loan was introduced, and it was run by Ghana Commercial Bank. And then um, getting to mid 80s, uh, SNET took over. So there was the SNET loans, and up to 05. When SNET had to focus on its core mandate of investments and other things, and uh, the student loan trust fund was set up. Okay. okay. So it's been in existence uh, since that time. Um, it's as you as you know, all over the world. I mean, student loan is not uh, only in Ghana. Even in Africa, if you go to Kenya and other African countries especially in the Eastern Africa countries, mm -hmm. um, the student loans, stu they sometimes uh, it's loans board and scholarship, mm -hmm. you know, are put together. So student loan has been in existence since 05. Okay. Uh, and um, suddenly, mm -hmm. it seems that the, the country is beginning to see the importance okay. of, of the student loan and there's uh, a lot of focus mm -hmm. being placed on, on student loan. Okay. But to the point you made that uh, without address systems and other things, uh, how do we recover? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, we, We've made some policies and uh, put some strategies in place that we've been able to improve recovery mm -hmm. uh -huh. and we, are, we continue to do it okay very good mm -hmm. so let's start with your organization student loan trust fund how is it set up you're the ceo mm -hmm. um, like what's the size of uh, your organization in terms of the number of people who work there and things like that our student loan trust fund is a uh, an agency under the ministry of education okay uh, we have the headquarters in accra okay but we have uh zona offices 
14 zona offices uh, around the country. Okay. And the zona offices are attached to major uh, institutions, tertiary okay. institutions okay. In, the, in the country. So not necessarily regions? No regions. Okay. Uh, but zones. Zones, okay. okay. Uh, like Accra, we have a zona office at Legon, mm -hmm. UPSA. Okay. And um, if you go to Kumasi, mm -hmm. we have two zones okay. there. Uh, KN University <coughs> okay. and uh, Kumasi Technical uh, University. KTR, okay. Uh, KTR. So uh, that's how we operate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, it, so it's clearly set up. Uh, but it, before you're my friend. Before mm -hmm. you worked there, I did not know about Student Loan Trust Fund. Do people know about Student Loan Trust Fund? As a matter of fact, uh, when I first went there, mm -hmm. that's uh, around <coughs> April 2017, mm -hmm. um, doing SWOT analysis, uh, mm -hmm. one thing that uh, hit me was the low visibility of the, okay. uh, of the fund. Okay. So one of the first things I did was to hire a PR guy. Okay, so okay. I went around the country, tour all the major universities, and uh, shockingly, I found that you can go to Cape Coast University and a uh, student is there, and they are not aware that, Look at that. you know. But uh, we've done a lot <laughs> of publicity, and now at least uh, a lot of people in the country have heard about student loan. Okay. And uh, the visibility is up, and even the, the importance of the loan uh, is people are waking up to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if um, is there a need-based system to get it, or anybody can just walk in? If I am uh, Kwame Despite's son, can I still come in and get a student loan? Uh, the student loan, I mean, there are requirements okay. that you need to satisfy before you get the loan. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, you must be a Ghanaian. Okay. And then you must have admission okay. to tertiary institution. Okay. And the institution must be accredited. accredited okay. And the program you are pursuing must also be accredited. And then you get SNET number. Uh, then we you create e-switch account you okay. know, so that uh, we make sure the money coming to you is secured. And um, you must have a um, working telephone number. Mm -hmm. uh, you must get also an email account. Okay. And then you find a guarantor. Okay. So if you satisfy all those requirements, okay. then you can go either online to mm. apply okay. or you go to one of our zona offices and okay. apply. So the guarantor piece, we'll come back to it, but uh, if I went and bought a, a, a SIM card and set up an email, do all this to qualify, to get the money, mm -hmm. and then I disappear from the face of the earth, how do you find me? Uh, if you qualify and you take the loan, mm -hmm. Uh, you have a guarantor, we, we know your SNIT number. Okay. Um, so if you disappear, uh, meaning, let's say, assuming you leave to another country, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, that, that's uh, one of the uh, strategies that I've put in place, uh, like diaspora recovery, for instance. Okay. So, so put in systems where we can even trace you if you are outside the country. Okay. So we did diaspora recovery. Okay. I traveled to the US and um, my operations manager went to UK. Okay. That we set up systems there. Okay. That are now um, even we are in collaboration with the Ghana mission. Okay. Uh -huh, that they, they they helping us that to whilst you are there filling your passport application and, and so on, uh, you know, there will be video talking about student loan. Oh, okay. And cool. there are some uh, radio stations, uh, a few a few of them uh, volunteer to be student loan ambassadors. Okay. Okay, so now, and we've set up 
online platforms. Okay. So people are paying using their Visa ah, and MasterCard. Okay. You know, while, while it's, uh, overseas. So if you, if you disappear, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we have ways of tracing people. Okay. And now it's going to get better. Okay. Because uh, with the Ghana card, with the introduction of Ghana card, we're harmonizing uh, the systems. Okay. So from here, you go to DVLA for okay. driver's license. It will show up and so on and so forth. Very good. Very good. How much can I hope to get? And would that be enough okay. for my college tuition? How much do you hope to get? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, I must credit... Uh, the present government, Nanado Danko Akufuado, uh, when during the 2016 campaign, he promised to increase the loan by 50%. Okay. At that time, uh, the lowest you could get was 1,000 Ghana CDs per academic year, and the highest oh, wow. was 1,000 or uh, 2,000. And then it for the whole academic year, yes, in 2016. In 2016, what's that going to do? So uh, it's been increased by 50 percent. Now the lowest is thousand five, okay, and the highest is three thousand, okay, okay. So the loan is supposed to support, okay, you know, okay. not to, um, but those in public institutions, the three thousand can pay your, you know, your oh, really? yeah, for for the academic year. Okay. But in private, you know, uh, tertiary institutions, okay. the, the, the tuition tends to be higher. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, uh, you can't talk about uh, student loan without talking about free SHS. I mean, sometimes when I hear the numbers that are coming up, that as a result of the free SHS, there's going to be this massive increase of uh, students coming out of the SHS who are going to want to continue? How do you how do you get ready? If you didn't, I don't know if you had enough money for earlier, but now you're going to have a whole lot more people. How would you accommodate those? We anticipated the avalanche of okay. our applications and people who will be knocking on our doors. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the the fact of the matter is that uh, a lot more students mm -hmm. who couldn't have afforded uh, high school education. Mm -hmm. benefited and, okay. and they've gone through it. Okay. So uh, going through it, the next phase is after graduation. What do we do with them? Okay. Okay. These are needy, but brilliant students okay. who need tertiary enrollment. Okay. Um, and I, again, the good thing is that uh, we have a very progressive government that thinks forward. Okay. So Ghana, if, if we want to catch up to countries like Singapore and others, okay, we need to push tertiary enrollment. Okay. Right now, what's the uh, percentage? Do you know? It's about, um, I believe, about 17%. 17%. Yes. So it's uh -huh. gone up. Yeah. That's okay. uh, so we, we, we need to push it. Okay. okay. And um, the president has thought through it okay that first of all, what do we do with the uh, you know this huge number of students okay so uh, we uh, as a country mm -hmm. we need to encourage to assist you know so that uh, a lot of them can go through tertiary education okay and um, that's one one of the one that's the major reason that in the manifesto that was unveiled in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. okay, the, the MPP government promised that if it's maintained in, in power, uh, the, the guarantorship is going to be taken away. Oh, wow. So that no guarantor, uh, because what, what, what the, the fact is, like this academic year, for instance, about 347,000 students mm -hmm. that is on the school list, mm -hmm. only about 30,000 qualified. Wow. Were able to come through to get the loans. Okay. Uh, there's uh, a whole lot that couldn't get the loan okay. because of the uh, guarantorship. Okay. You see, the, the guarantor is not just ordinary, anybody can guarantee Somebody's for you. Somebody's in good standing. Uh, somebody who contributes to SNET. 
Okay. Okay. So uh, it's been a chronic problem. So Student Loan Trust Fund, we decided to diversify the guarantorship in order to make it easier for people to obtain guarantors. Okay. So we included like religious bodies, um, you know, they, they are assemblies and so on and so forth. Recently, we even approached the uh, uh, National House of Chiefs. We wanted to bring in the chiefs and okay. others too. Okay. But still, it, it, it is, it's very difficult. Okay. There's a student, I mean, uh, in one of our programs, the former SRC president at KNUSD uh -huh. called in, and he said in one academic year, about 800 students approached him mm -hmm. to help them to get guarantors, and he couldn't find them. Wow. So some, some of them have to drop down. Wow. And further studies reveal that uh, most of students that encounter that kind of problem are students who are first time ever coming from their families yeah. to enter tertiary institutions. Yeah. So for to make uh, access, free access uh, to tertiary education, mm -hmm. taking away the guarantorship uh, is going to help a lot. But uh, so if, if the focus on education, okay, I'm going to play a devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. You hear people say free SHS. Why, why is it even necessary? Why are we spending so much time on education? You mentioned tertiary enrollment. If we're at 17%, where is Singapore? Where is South Korea? Mm -hmm. And why do we need to enroll all these people in college when we already, as back in 2016, if you remember, now you don't hear their name anymore. But back in 2016, we used to hear unemployment, uh, unemployed graduate right, association. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have unemployed graduates association, why are you adding more? Um, let's go back to your uh, earlier question. Mm. Why is it necessary yeah. to have free SHS? Mm. Uh, I think, uh, as you and I know, why is everybody in, around the world want to go to USA? Mm. Okay, For education. I mean, USA is the greatest, not because of the skyscrapers in Manhattan, mm -hmm. but because they laid solid foundation for the future mm -hmm. by <laughs> educating the youth. Mm -hmm. So a nation that invests in the youth is forward planning. Okay, so uh, the, that investment in the youth, uh, we are laying very solid foundation for the country. So with that, the next level is to, you know, after free SHS, and as you and I know, like in the U.S., for instance, student loan is the backbone mm -hmm. of free SHS. Because when you get out of uh, secondary high, high school education, mm -hmm. you can get loans yeah. and so on. So that is what the government is introducing to this country. So after free SHS and you have, free, uh, you have access to okay. loans, yeah. then uh, higher education financing, then okay. more students will go. But talking about graduate un unemployment, mm -hmm. okay, um, you see the innovation that MPP government has put in place, NAPCO, other things. But I see that Ghana is industrializing. Mm -hmm. Okay with uh, uh, one district, one, one, one factory, planting for food and jobs, and a whole lot of uh, policies that the government is putting in place. Okay. We are moving from Ghana of uh, graduate unemployment. So a student mm -hmm. who is entering tertiary education mm -hmm. uh, today, or, or, or this year, mm -hmm. or 2021, mm -hmm. by the time they graduate in four years' time, uh, we are not going to have a situation of graduate unemployment. Okay. And, and also, uh, some of the students are going to be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. like you. you know? mm -hmm. They're going to create their own you know, uh, jobs, okay. like those who, are, who, who uh, created Facebook and other things. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to assume that all of them are coming to line up for government jobs and, and so on and so forth. 
Okay. So I take it the curriculum lays emphasis on um, the private sector mindset of upcoming students because historically it's been I go to high school, I go to university, when I finish I'm looking for a job, preferably a government job where I can be there all the t for a long time. Now is there an effort to include in the curriculum two things? One, love of country and two, love of entrepreneurship. Uh, there's a whole lot of reforms okay. that has gone through uh, education. Okay. Uh, the current minister, uh, Dr. Matthew Poku mm -hmm. uh, set up a whole reform secretariat. Okay. And there's a whole lot of reforms uh, that is going into Ghana's education system. Okay. But in addition to that, it's the government. Okay. If, if you can do all the, re, uh, the reforms in education, if the government doesn't believe in private yeah. enterprise, he, he'll get nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, luckily, we have a government that believes in you know, private enterprise. So with that coupled with reforms in our uh, you know, educational setup and other things, okay. yeah, we, we, we're moving in the right direction. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to pick back on, uh, before we go on the next break, uh, mm -hmm. on the break, I want to go back to your earlier statement that tertiary education was actually free. I didn't know that. All I knew was that the students were pampered at the time. But I also know that some of them, no, no sooner had they finished with uh, enjoying the free tertiary education, that they got on a plane and left for... Um, you know, overseas. That, that, that's not necessarily true. Uh, okay. <laughs> Is it, that's not necessarily true. I, I know some of them. That's no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, no, no. But Ghana, mm -hmm. I'm talking about after independence. Okay. Okay. When Tajira was free, most Ghanaians didn't even want to travel outside the country. Okay. A lot of them stayed and helped in the. So when was the Tajira, uh, 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 when did it end? Um, um, the free. Uh huh. Uh, get to late 70s, late early 70s. 80s. Okay. But, but also remember the, 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 a lot of trauma, you know, through, uh, through the, yeah, the coup so called pseudo revolutions, yeah. coup d'etats, and so on and so forth. Yeah. That, that, that was uh, the reason why uh, a lot of Ghanaians left. left. Yeah, so yeah. I know that I'm saying mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. I grew up on KNUST campus, so mm -hmm. I know students who are my friend, they, they finish and then they go. Is there an mm -hmm. effort to reach out to them? Because those are the ones who actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But are they, is there an effort to get them to recruit something? you are back? back. You see, a whole lot of, <laughs> you see, <laughs> <laughs> you are back and back. A lot of people are back. We had to go to university here. Well, also. you didn't go to university <laughs> here. At least you went to right. high school here. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so when, when we're talking about mm -hmm. the exodus, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the the tide is turning. Yes. Okay. Now the brain drain is becoming brain gain. That's right. Okay. Because uh, a lot of Ghanaians mm -hmm. that went out. Mm -hmm also educated themselves on their own okay. without government scholarship and other things. Okay. And uh, a lot of them are willing to come. Okay. You see, so, so it depends on the, the direction that the country is going. Okay. Okay. And, and the governance. Um, at the core of it, Ghanaians uh, love their country. They want to come back yeah. and, and help. But 80% of them want to yes, come back. Yes, want okay. to come back and help. At some point. All right, very good. Uh, we'll go on a quick break. When we return, we'll delve into scholarships and loans. What are some of the differences besides the obvious? This is Diaspora Weekly. You're watching Diaspora Network Television. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I go kill you with okay. 10 years of rewarding radio and television excellence. 10 years of rewarding excellent voices and personalities. 10 years of providing quality entertainment. RTP Awards is 10 years. The excitement is back. 
the 10th Adonko RTP Awards hitting the Stempiski Hotel live on the 7th of November 2020, coupled with spectacular performances, times 6 p.m. The Adonko RTP Awards is brought to you by Adonko Hand Sanitizer, Adonko Next Level Energy Drink, Jinray Estates, Bio Litigation Freelance, Vernon Mineral Water, Your Lifestyle, Dofu Roofing Systems, Yas Tissues, Special Drinks, Jerry Gatti Fashion House, Papa's Pizza, Axis Shipping, 247 Zara Boutique, A to Z Auto Services, Sumisura by Abdul, a step ahead in tailoring. The 10th Adonko RTP Awards is a black tie event. Attendance is by invitation. For DNT to win more awards, vote for us now. For DNT to win the Television Digital Station of the Year Award, dial star 447 star 111 hash. Select RTP DNT to vote. Or you can log on to rtpawardsafrica.com. Select RTP DNT to vote. Hello and welcome back. This is Diaspora Weekly edition on education. And my guest is Nana Eje Abua, Chief Executive Officer for Student Loan Trust Fund under the Ministry of Education. Nana, you mentioned that you've been at post since April, April of, of 2017. 2017. And so uh, now being October of 2020, you've been at post for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. What can you say you've how have you moved the dial uh, numerically uh, within the past three and a half years? There, there, there are a lot of uh, reforms and, okay. and strategies. Like uh, I mentioned the diaspora recovery, okay. something that I introduced. I also trained the operation staff mm -hmm. on data analysis and uh, how to systems of... Um, getting talking to even uh, people mm -hmm. uh, to recover i've created call center mm -hmm. specifically for recovery okay. i've instituted uh recovery month okay that uh in may of each year this year because of covid we push it to july so during the recovery month uh we go to studios like this uh we send text messages we um you know, try to remind people where to go to pay the loan. Okay. And um, if introduce mobile app. Okay. That now uh, it's easier for people to pay. Okay. Okay, so they can pay through their phone instead of asking them to go to the bank or to come to our uh, office uh, to, to make the payment. And cumulatively, I've been able to when I came in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. the whole year, the amount that they were able to recover was 15.4 million Ghana cities. Wow. I've been able to move it to 36. Wow. Million. Yeah. So in three years, you've doubled your recovery. Yeah, doubled the recovery. In terms of percentage, where was the percentage recovery? Your percentage was about 32 percent. I've moved it to 62 percent. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of yeah. movement in that direction, and mm -hmm. so these little thing, these little little reforms, you credit mm -hmm. uh, the turnaround mm -hmm. for, for those. Yes, and and you see, that's the thing when, I, when people I, recover. I, I, I've created a dedicated desk okay. that uh, you know they uh, interface with employers, okay. especially those in the you know in, in the informal sector. Okay, so what was your target for? <laughs> the next three years, if you were there, my target, uh, and also um, mm -hmm. that there, there was a there's a law in mm -hmm. the books that was never utilized. Okay. Okay. That we, the act that set us up, also empowers us to publish names. Okay. So I did that. Ah, uh, name and shame. Yeah, name and shame. <laughs> I published the names and faces, you know. And faces. Yeah, and faces. I mean, uh, pictures. Of, of those who owe wow. and have not paid. Okay. And it paid off. A lot of people came to pay, and uh, those who don't want their faces to be shown also came and make arrangements to pay. Interesting. Yes. And you can draw a, a direct correlation to when you started publishing and how your recovery increased. Yeah, we have the data. Absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. Very yeah. good. And um, 
the more people pay back, of course, the more you have money to give to more people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's talk about scholarships and loans. Um, the government has a scholarship secretariat mm -hmm. and then it also has a student loan trust fund. Are you guys competing uh, for the same, do uh, the same cities? Yes. And interestingly, if you go to other African countries like mm -hmm. Marawi, mm -hmm. if you go to Malawi, Kenya, they, they combine, you know, they call it scholarship and loan board. Okay. So it's one agency. Okay. But in Ghana, we have a scholarship secretariat. Mm -hmm. And even Get Fund gives scholarship. Okay. okay. So we have the uh, student loan scholarship secretariat, Get Fund. So we are all competing for the same you know, the, the, the mega, you know, cities. I think I know the answer to this, but who mm. should get more of that? <laughs> uh, who should get more? Uh -huh. Well, uh, I mean, from where I sit, uh -huh. uh, and I'm not being selfish, I think uh, student loans should get more. You know why? 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 Because uh, if, let's say, if, if I have thousand cities uh -huh. and I give as loans, mm -hmm. and even if I recover 50%, it's fifty percent that I can give as loans for a, another group of students, mm -hmm. but if I give the thousand cities a scholarship, mm -hmm. it's gone. Yeah. Uh, I'm not underrating the importance of scholarship. Yeah, yeah you, you know. Uh, maybe you should. Maybe we should. Okay, but maybe. but the, the the thing is, and also with, with scholarships, uh -huh. what you can see is that uh, if if you take care of one foreign student, uh -huh. okay, somebody uh, averagely, tell uh -huh. me in Texas. Uh -huh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> you know if it's, uh, I'm in state college. Okay. Uh, okay, so if, if the government is sponsoring uh -huh. one student yeah. going to a state college in Texas, in Dallas. So for my, my daughter paid $52,000 a year. Okay. Let, let's say half of it. Okay. So, say it's twenty five thousand. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, convert that to cities. Wow. And see how many students. And that's get. free, gone. Gone. If uh, you gave it as loan, whatever you recover. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it makes sense. But so why is it that historically the Ghana government has seemed to have shined a, a focus more on scholarship secretariat than uh, the student loan trust fund? And get fund? I think uh, going forward. Uh huh. You know, um, the focus is shifting. It's shifting, okay. Uh, and uh, with free SHS, okay. uh, as a country, we need to reset our priorities. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, make sure that, you know, uh, if you get this group of students coming from uh -huh. secondary high school uh -huh. and they need money for tertiary, yeah. okay, the government is shifting the focus. So, As it should. Yeah. Because, look, it, 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 the, the, the psyche, the mentality of the Ghanaian is, oh, scholarship, we need it free. Look at, um, the, oh, free. The government has paid primary school education free, JHS free, SHS free, mm -hmm. and now you want it to give you free money mm -hmm. f uh, for, for college. Yeah. I mean... I think for, for tertiary, I think if you ask me, I think 100% of the money should come to you so that you give our loan, you get back, and you give more. Yes. I mean, uh, 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 we need to shift. Because if the focus is to help the needy, mm -hmm. because the argument, I'm sure the guy sitting as scholarship secretariat is there, oh, we need to help people. Well, you're also helping people. Mm -hmm. You're giving them loans, go to school, and when you finish and you get a job, you pay back. I mean, um, the scholarship secretariat must be there, mm -hmm. but I mean, are they, uh, maybe there are some few courses, mm -hmm. few yeah. priority courses. Strategically, strategic courses. if the government wants to focus wants this, to, then yes. it pays people to, mm -hmm. okay. But, but if there's a course uh, that you can find mm -hmm. in the um, Ghanaian treasury institutions, yeah. why give scholarship? Yeah. In dollars, you know, for yeah. when uh, students here cannot get money, yeah. loans, loans that they are going to pay yeah. back. Yeah, doesn't make sense. So from a percentage standpoint, they, they get fund money. What percentage comes to scholarship secretary and what, what comes to student loan? 
Uh, I don't know what percentage goes to the scholarship secretariat, but <laughs> what I know is that uh -huh. we um, it's up to ten percent of the inflows into get fund is supposed to, you know, come to student loan, but it's discretionary. Is it up, up to ten percent? So yeah. when it came, how much was what percentage was coming? About to? three percent. Three <laughs> percent. <Yeah. laughs> and how much is coming now? What percentage is coming now? No, it's about three percent. It's the same three percent. Yeah. When you came in, it was three percent coming to you, mm -hmm. and now th I don't get this. Okay, mm -hmm. so you come in, and your recovery rate. I can understand a government say, "Oh, your recovery rate is." 32 percent. We give the money, they don't pay back, so we might as well give it to them as scholarship, scholarship right? But you've improved it from 32 to 62 percent. Mm -hmm. So clearly, if I'm sitting there, I say, wait a minute, this guy is getting the money back. Let's give him more so he can give more back and get more. So why is it still at 3 percent? I think uh, the, the, the emphasis uh -huh. was on, uh, not on the loans, okay, because uh, uh, interestingly, uh, there were certain perceptions about uh -huh. the loan, okay. and also uh, people thought uh, some students come for the loan and they don't need it. But from where I sit, I get frantic calls from students that need the money to be able to write their exams. And quite frankly, let's face it, and, and, and this is speculation on my part, mm -hmm. but the guy who's getting maybe what twenty, thirty thousand dollars to go abroad for, for a course that's also present in Ghana. Mm -hmm. How is that more of a need than someone who needs just give me three thousand dollars to go three thousand cities? See, uh, yeah, <laughs> three thousand cities to go. I'll pay you back. Yeah. Three thousand cities. I'll pay you back, and they <laughs> clearly need the three thousand. Yeah. Because without it, uh -huh. they'll be thrown out of, uh, I mean, uh, college. So what's the effort to boost it to, if, 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 for me, the 10% is not even enough. But if three, if I were you, I will const every day, uh, the Minister of Education, I'll be at his doorstep. No, I mean, the Minister of, uh, Minister of Education has been mm -hmm. uh, sympathetic towards, you know, the loan. And he's done everything to support. Okay. okay. I, I think uh, the priority as a nation mm -hmm. is now shifting. Okay. Okay. Because with free SHS. Okay. Okay. Student loan is becoming a priority. Okay. Okay. So the the rethinking and uh, the, there's go, going to be a whole lot of revamping. Okay. In the student loan, yeah. including um, you know the how money is divided out. Okay. Into other agencies. Okay. Okay. So it's all on the drawing board. All and, right. Uh, things so have you change. worked out uh, uh, the maths whereby? Because, okay. Now you have two things that are going to be, you. You use the right word when we began to say an avalanche mm -hmm. because what's coming to you is an avalanche. Yeah. You have the free SHS folks coming in, mm -hmm. and then you've introduced something. This the, the Nana administration has introduced something. Mm -hmm. The no guarantor. Tell me mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, uh, to our credit, uh -huh. we we did certain projections. Okay. Uh, we articles in the Daily Graphic and other places, okay. uh, making projections okay. about looking at, you know, with uh, figures uh, of secondary enrollment, mm -hmm. and uh, we also mm -hmm. made projection of how many who be qualifying, mm -hmm. you know, for tertiary education. So we may project a number if, say, uh, historically, about 10% come for the loan. Okay. okay. So now w with the renewed interest, mm -hmm. okay, uh, let's say we project about 20%, 30%, 50%. So uh, with, with the no guarantor, mm -hmm. you know, the projection is going to yeah, go be even up higher. there. Right. Okay. Uh, so so we, we've made all those projections and government is uh, looking at it okay all right so um do do can if for those who are finishing free shs and mm. i think this is the year that the first the free ones the are coming, are coming out. Yeah. okay mm. um 
can we look forward to, do you, do you think you're going to go to 6%, 9%, or even get a full 10%? Is there oh, no, something no, I mean, I mean, the 10%, the, um, the manifesto promise okay. come December, I mean, January. Okay. Okay. Uh, that promise becomes a Everybody, policy. Okay. Okay. And, and it's going to be implemented. Okay. Yeah, so we are looking at that. Okay. Yeah, so by January, uh, the, the first cohort okay. of free SHS are going to knock on our doors. Okay, very uh, good, very good. Um, to get the money. Uh, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap it up with um, all these and the beneficiaries and who gets qualified, and even we'll talk about the election. Stay tuned. This is Diaspora Weekly, and you're on Diaspora Network Television. Cool, fresh and trendy with a new look Makes you feel real good, that refreshing vibe Satisfies you right just the way you like different think special this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the fda hello and welcome back this is diaspora weekly my name is jermaine Nkrumah, and i'm joined by nana ej yabwa ceo of student loan trust fund today we've been talking about student loan vis-a-vis -vis scholarship uh, but now i want to shift to education just education in general. You mentioned that our tertiary um, enrollment is about 17%. And I heard we're actually the, one of the highest in Africa, if not the highest. All right. South Korea is about 93, I heard. Why does it even matter? Why do we need to have everybody in university? I don't think we need everybody in uh, university. Yeah. But, um, in I mean, tertiary. Yeah, when, when we talk about, oh, in tertiary, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, TVET and other things, mm -hmm. you know, it's all tertiary. Um, but studies have been done and indicated that, uh, I mean, the higher the tertiary enrollment, okay, ratio, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, uh, you see a commensurate with the development of the nation. Okay. okay. So, the more people you get in through tertiary, um, the, the 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 country also develops. Okay. But what good is that going to do when we still have a mindset of going to university? As soon as I come out, I put my resume, my CV together. I'm going to see this big man so they can get me in a government position. If we don't change the mindset and say, look. The, f the, the purpose of going to university is to solve problems, not just to get a job. Do you mm -hmm. think that's in the th in thinking in this educational system? Uh, you're talking about attitudinal change. Yeah. But it's also part of education. Okay. Okay. You know, the, the, the more educated the population becomes. Okay. Okay. And also the leadership. Okay. You see, uh, for... Well, uh, thank God we have the right leadership. Okay. Yeah, in Ghana, as as we see it. Okay. Okay. So, as we going along, mm -hmm. the thinking mm -hmm. uh, would also. Uh, I mean, we get to a point that people would not be chasing only government jobs. Okay. Uh, people will be entrepreneurs. People will be creative, creative thinking, uh, and it's also. The, the, the reform in our curriculum. 
Okay. And other things. Is there some reforms going on? Yeah, there's there's a whole lot of reforms. Okay. Yeah, in in the uh, in our curriculum. Okay. Okay. So, with with those reforms and uh, with uh, governance uh, attention to private enterprise and other things, mm -hmm. and also uh, the foundation we are laying for industrialization. Okay. I, I, it will get to a point that when people come out, okay, they they thinking about setting up their own factories. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but but why am I hearing that the other par another party says that when they've sent many signals that when they come these free SHS they're gonna got it. Don't what what do they see that this administration doesn't see or vice versa? Uh, what do they see? That? <laughs> Well, I, I, I think that's why, why we are, we have two separate, you know, uh, parties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, with the MPP, for instance, uh, you see a whole lot of uh, social intervention programs in the country mm -hmm. um, are being instituted by the MPP. And they go through uh, resistance. When NHIS was uh, being debated in parliament and this he walked away mm. okay you remember even uh, when oil was found mm. okay so so we have that history but strangely enough mm -hmm. strangely enough mm -hmm. there's a paradox here in ghana the party that's instituting all these uh, yeah. uh in intervention mm -hmm. it's supposed to be the pro private sector party the capitalist yeah the capitalist uh, but and it, now it they are mm -hmm. basically pursuing a lot of socialist agenda, mm -hmm. and those who are socialists mm -hmm. are fighting them. Uh, it's not socialist I agenda, mean, but yeah, it's, but it's capitalism it's, with a with heart. A, with a heart, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some will say, "Oh, well, if it's free, this, free, this, free, mm -hmm. this, it, it, mm -hmm. it falls into that." Mm -hmm. And you would think that the party that calls himself with the social democrat, they say, "Sure, now they've seen our lives, so let's work with them." But rather, they are fighting it. Mm -hmm. Do you, is that, am I missing anything? You, as you already pointed out, that's a paradox. <laughs> we, need, we, we need to solve it. But, <laughs> but the, 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 the good thing is that mm. um, uh, MPP is not, uh, it's, it's a capitalism with human heart. Okay. okay so whilst we moving the country forward, we are not leaving behind okay. those who are needy. Okay. So... Okay. Uh, and that's a game changer. So with free SHS, mm -hmm. you know, it beats my imagination. Anybody who would think a policy like that is bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> because uh, it, it, when we were growing up, mm -hmm. one family could mortgage, say, a cocoa farm mm -hmm. to get one person through secondary education. Mm -hmm. Now you get a government that, that say it's free. says uh, it's free. Uh -huh. So we get into a point in Ghana where uh, unless you are head, you know. <laughs> you, <laughs> There's a few screws missing. <laughs> yeah, free, okay. You, you, I mean, if, if you are not that endowed, mm -hmm. okay, then uh, you, you cannot uh, attain your educational objectives. Oh, okay. Okay, but now... You see, money is not an obstacle. Okay. From high school, now government is saying take loans. Okay. And when you graduate, I give you two years, and then you have another eight years to pay. Two year moratorium. Two years moratorium. Wow. Then you have eight years to pay. When this thing came, this free SHS came. I was looking forward to a lot of these KIAs uh, and uh, street hawkers to just drop their stuff and go to school. Why didn't that happen? It, ha it has happened. It has? Yes. I mean, when, when, uh, from my experience, when, when uh, I first came from the U.S., mm -hmm. there were a lot of, you know, young kids on the street selling. Mm -hmm. Now, most of them are going to, are taking advantage of the free SHS. Okay. Yeah. So, so we've seen a market difference, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. How do you keep, uh, I mean, with your kind of work, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of statistical 
data that mm -hmm. tells you what direction you're going and everything. Mm -hmm. Project for me where you see Student Loan Trust Fund five years from now. Five years from now, um, and you know, it has even started. Five years from now, it's going to be, you know, a very solid okay. uh, agency. Okay. Five years from now, a lot more uh, Ghanaians would have gone through it to attain their educational goals. Okay. Five years from now, uh, the visibility will be way up. Okay. Okay. Uh, five years from now, um, you know, Ghanaians, is this no guarantee policy mm -hmm. has taken a big burden of the heads of most uh, families. Okay. That are, and we know that even students, continuing students, mm -hmm. those who couldn't uh, afford or who couldn't get guarantees, mm -hmm. some of them will be coming. For the, so for the long. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, bringing us up to speed on what's going on. This is a very important part. I didn't know uh, that th there are no guarantors. Um, student loan is only getting 3% of the get farm money. Man, you should be getting the full 10% and even more. But in closing, in closing, if you can look in this camera, what do you want to tell the viewer? Someone who's going to school who doesn't have any idea where they're going to get money from. What do you tell them? What I'll tell them is that um, this no guarantor policy is a very pragmatic policy. It's a policy that is taking the burden uh, off the shoulders of many uh, parents. And it's also that's giving hope to most of the needy Barbarian students that went through free SHS. That now, as free SHS is not going to be the end journey, now you can assess loans to attain your tertiary, uh, tertiary education. And then it's flexible loan. Okay. And you have a, a two-year moratorium, then eight years to pay. Uh, so don't miss this opportunity. And also, you see, the, uh, let's say if your parent is a petty trader, instead of some of them go to source loans from the banks with high interest rates. Okay. Uh, student loan, the interest rate is only 12%. Okay. And you have eight years to pay. Wow. Okay, so don't miss this opportunity. But uh, we, this no guarantee policy is going to take effect if Ghanaians maintain the MPP government. And I believe uh, it's going to happen okay. uh, because uh, given the good job. Uh, the, and the, the interesting is that the, the free SHS that is being practiced in Ghana is more comprehensive than what pertains in U.S. In U.S., you know, uh, you don't have, you are not a border. Mm -hmm. In the morning, mm -hmm. the school bus takes you to school. After school, you come home. Uh, they don't buy your uniform. Mm -hmm. Here, they even buy your church clothes. Wow. Wow. Okay. And in U.S., based on your parents' income, mm -hmm. even the lunch that is served to you in school, okay. you know, the, the, the parents will have to contribute so, yeah. something. Yeah. So uh, we have this policy, this uh, very comprehensive free SHS policy, mm -hmm. and now the government is topping it up. The government is assuring you that you, there's an agency that you can go and source loans okay. uh, to attain your tertiary education. Okay. So I believe our Ghanaians uh, would, uh, you know, would, uh, I, I, I know that Ghanaians are you know, the the uh, Ghanaians are going to make the right choices, okay. and that more students will be able to attain uh, tertiary education. Very good, very good. Uh, I'd like to thank Nana Ejeyabwa, CEO of Student Loan Trust Fund, for joining us on this episode of Diaspora Weekly. In closing, I'll say this: I I don't even know if, if people, if the public knew the the the, the significance 
of the investment in education. First Free edu uh, SHS is a landmark policy Should that's going to home. be a game changer, like you said. And this, the government did not just take people to um, the, 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 the riverbank and say swim or sink. It says, no, I'm going to help you and make money available. If you don't have an uncle, if you don't have a dad, as long as you have the Ghana card, you can slap the Ghana card and say, my name is Kofi Menu. please give me a loan and let me go to university. I mean, are you serious? Ten years from now, we should not have anybody in Ghana who is not educated. And can you imagine what that is going to do to a country's development? So I'd like to thank you again for uh, educating us on that. Uh, I'd like to thank my crew. Uh, what? Uh, uh, Sami? How can I forget Sami's name? Samuel Ousua Sari, Philip uh, Hammond, uh, Stephen Akoto. These are the guys who brought this to you. And oh my goodness, how can I even forget this? Specialize. You saw me coughing a, a little out. These days with COVID, even when you're coughing, you have to hide your cough. I was doing this <laughs> as soon as I drank Specialize, it went away. So Specialize, they've been a great supporter of our program. You need to patronize them. We'd like to thank them for supporting us. And for you, the viewer, thank you so much for watching another episode of Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah and you have a good rest of the day.